in Kenya. And this is a conversation which uh, uh, informally I've, I've, I've been having with the, with the, with the United States. Um, um, it is pointing to two, uh, two things. One, uh, there's a likelihood uh, that we are going to have a, a stopgap uh, sort of agreement, uh, what we are calling the uh, Strategic Trade and Investment Partnership uh, step uh, with the United States. Uh, as we seek more clarity on, uh, on the direction to take on the bilateral agreement. But on Agoa itself, uh, we're going to have, uh, if I'm approved by this House, a, 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 a trade conference, a meeting of African ministers uh, later this year. Uh, and we are, Kenya is going to push for a common position for Africa that we have to have Agoa extended. Um, like all agreements, uh, they are also uh, subject to local politics. So by that time, I think in the next uh, uh, two, three weeks, the, the, we are going to have the midterm elections in the U.S., something which I'll be uh, watching very closely to see which direction the Congress takes. Uh, but irrespective of which, uh, whatever happens, uh, Africa and Kenya being on the front line is going to ask that uh, we take a common African position uh, and that is that uh, Agoa is not going anywhere. So uh, we will be coming back to this house to seek support uh, even as we deal with the other legislatures uh, within the African continent and to also express strongly the desire of Kenyan people and African people that this act is very useful. It has grown jobs. It is, we are exporting uh, quite a lot under Agoa we have not even exploited the list of, of products and services that can be exported within Agoa. So short answer is whether it, we are going for bilateral or not bilateral, whether we are going for the short term uh, strategic uh, initiative or not, uh, it is uh, my commitment and the commitment of uh, President William Ruto to push within the African context that we are able to link fence and, and, and protect Agoa. He has also asked a lot about that question about the EPZ and the special economic zone. I, I, and I think another question has been asked about uh, the cost of land uh, for the EPZ. By the way, uh, we don't have shortage of land for manufacturing. Uh, what we have is a lot of EPZ allocated in most of the counties that has not been developed. And I have had this discussion with the president and we have agreed that we are going to fast track development of every idle space. Um, because of the political problems that uh, our, our neighbors in Ethiopia uh, went through, uh, most of the Ethiopia was suspended from, from, from Agoa. And so therefore, all that there is a lot of demand for industrial space uh, within the EPZ. Uh, Sri Lanka had similar problems. Uh, which also lowered their export, especially to key markets like the United States. So to be able to take advantage of this uh, upsurge in demand, uh, especially from the U.S. And, and key markets like China and, and Europe, it is uh, our desire that we are going to develop every available space. At the same time, we have got two flagship, uh, uh, let me call them three. Uh, one is not very apparent. Uh, we have got the Dongo Kundu, uh, special economic zone in Kuala County, which uh, it is our, I'm, I'm under a very firm instruction from the president that upon approval by this parliament, we have to make Dongo Kudu move from paper to practice to take it off so that we can be able to, to create jobs. The Naivasha uh, uh, special economic zone as well, uh, we, we are going to see a lot of activities in that area to take it off the ground. We have got investors who have come in with the proposals. Uh, I think the out the the past the minute past government did flag off one of the uh, major investment projects in Naivasha from 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 Turkish investors and other economic zones, special economic zones, uh, Konza Development City, which doesn't appear like an economic zone, but actually is a special economic zone. That if I'm approved by this house, uh, I am going to be working very hard around the clock to bring in global technology companies within the within the uh, technopolis. Uh, two new uh, planned uh, special economic zones. Uh, one is a railway city development uh, authority right here in Nairobi, uh, adjacent to the railway, uh, which we hope to be our masterpiece for, 
for new urbanization and uh, the Nairobi International Financial Center to bring together uh, the world uh, leading financial institutions. So these are the public, uh, or the public uh, special economic zones. But also our people and also our, our foreign investors have trooped in with the special, uh, private special economic zones. So far we have got around 13 special economic zones uh, by private entities. Our, 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 our agenda is to have an open door policy. I know a lot of people have been going out there saying, I have applied for my SEC license, I did not get approval, I have the run, I have the money. It is inconceivable, Mr. Chair, how you can frustrate somebody who have their own land and they have more money. I'm still trying to grapple with, with that very, very confusing situation. And, and, and so therefore, as a summary, we are going to ensure that we expand our IPZ and we are going to expand the special economic zones. 